to compute some forecast in Frepol, uh, you need first to populate some data. So I need to populate the items. Uh, I need the name of the item here. Uh, optionally, you can provide your description and you can provide uh, optionally also an owner. So owner is used for hierarchy. So if I pick, for instance, uh, the last one, the empire chair, I'm saying that this is under all material um, items. So this is the hierarchy. My The parent of empire, empire chair is all material. All material needs to be declared. And all material is also under all items, which needs to be declared. Then you can provide the cost or leave it at zero if you're not interested in the values. Once my item table is populated, I need to populate my location table. So here again, I'm using a hierarchy. I have three physical locations and I'm creating a dummy location, which is all location. And I'm saying that they all belong. They, all, they are all under this all locations location. Third table is customer. So I only have one customer, which is generic customer. Uh, once these three tables, item, location, customers have been populated, I can then populate the sales order table. So this is my demand history. Uh, I need to provide all my history. So the name of the demand, what, which item was this demand for, which location, which customer, what is the status of uh, this demand? what was the quantity and what was the due date. Whether it's closed or open doesn't uh, make a difference. If uh, the demand is in the past, it's going to be taken into consideration by Frepol. So once my sales order table has been uh, populated, I need to populate the forecast table. And the forecast table corresponds to the combination you want Frepol to compute forecast for. So I want to have a forecast for all surface tennis ball pack, Brussels gen and generic customer. Um, I have 22 different combinations in this example that I want Frepol to compute forecast for. I need to provide a unique name per uh, combination. So uh, here by convention, we use uh, the name of the item at location at customer. Which method? So the method, uh, usually we leave it as automatic, meaning that we, le we let Frepol compute and choose among all the different methods, uh, textbook methods, which are here, which one um, is the best one, which one minimizes the forecast error, and Frepol will pick this one. So if Frepol finds, for instance, seasonality, the seasonality uh, method is going to be picked, or the trend method, uh, otherwise moving average, intermittent and constant will be tested, and uh, Frepol will pick the one that minimizes the forecast error. Uh, planned uh, means do you want Frepol to plan this forecast, but this is supply planning. And if you want forecast, uh, sorry, if you want Frepol to plan this forecast, uh, what should be the priority? And do you want the forecast to be discrete, meaning that do you want the, the forecast to be integer numbers or decimal numbers? So by true, I want only integer numbers. Um, the good news is that you don't really have to populate this table because Frepol can do it automatically for you by picking all different combinations found in the uh, demand history and uh, this table will be computed for you. So this table is not mandatory to populate. You can leave it empty. It's going to be populated by Frepol. Um, this is a parameter that you can control. Uh, it's forecast dot populate forecast table. So here I'm setting it to true, meaning that I want Frepol to populate this table for me uh, based on my sales order history. Uh, the next parameter that is interesting is the forecast calendar. Uh, do you want Frepol to compute the forecast in weekly buckets, in monthly buckets, in quarter buckets? So that is the value you would put here. Uh, in this example, I'm going to choose the weekly buckets. Once this data is populated, I can go to the admin table, then execute, make sure that the gener generate forecast uh, option is ticked and I'm gonna launch here, press the launch button. It's going to take a couple of seconds and my forecast has been generated. So there are two different screens uh, where uh, your forecast can be seen. It's the forecast report and forecast editor. Let's go to forecast editor first. 
So here I have three panes uh, on the top of the screen. I have the item pane, the location pane, and the customer pane. I can, first of all, choose the order I want to see the panes or whether I want a pane to disappear, for instance, here. I'm not really interested in customers because I only have one customer, so I can choose only item location. So in this example, uh, I see again now my hierarchy that has been reproduced in the item pane and the hierarchy of the location which is here. So I have my two location, a tennis shop Brussels and tennis shop Paris and all locations. Uh, because I have no sales order in the RDC, RDC doesn't show up here in the location. It's a, it's a kind of warehouse, uh, just a kind of pass-through location. So I don't have any forecast for this one. Um, the items, I have two um, children under all items, which is all material and all sports gear. And for each children, I can click on this triangle to see what is inside. So this one has one, two, three, six different items. And for each item, I can see the forecast for the next three time buckets. So here I have chosen weeks. So this is current week, uh, next week, and two weeks from now. Uh, these are uh, aggregated values. So you see that all materials is 46 and all sports gate is 24. So if I sum the two of them, all item is obviously 70. And same for all material, if I sum the six, the values for the six different children, this is going to give me 46. So I can pick any combination here. I can choose uh, all items at all location. And I will see um, in the middle pane here, I have the uh, drawing of the sales history in green. So I can see that uh, it, I, it seems that, that I have a bit of seasonality here. And in red, this is the forecast that has been computed by Frepol. So you see that uh, the seasonality has been found, detected, and reproduced by Frepol in red. For all items and all location, I can see uh, what is uh, the total forecast for the current bucket. I can see the forecast for the next buckets. So next bucket 71, 73. So the first three buckets, I have obviously the same values as what I have above, 70, 71, 73. This is the same, but this table here shows me much more buckets. Um, I can pick any location, any combination, as I was saying, I can take an item at a given location. If I want to see what is the forecast for Nova Cracket at Brussels, I can click on Nova Cracket at Brussels. So here you see that uh, for Novak, uh, the values, the forecast is uh, 23, 10, 23, 23. So this is for all locations. You can see 23, 23, 23, but you can have the breakdown down there between the two different locations. So Brussels has uh, uh, 14 and Paris has nine for current buckets. So again, I can see my 14, 15, 14 here because I have chosen uh, this Nova Cracket at Brussels. So interesting thing in Frapple is that you can do overrides. Um, I can, um, so the forecast baseline is what has been computed by Frapple, 14. I can change, um, I can change this value. I can say, okay, I think I'm gonna sell more for instance. I can put a 20 here. So if I put a, 20, I'm adding uh, 6 to what uh, Frepple has computed in the forecast. I can save my value. You immediately see that there is a peak here. So this corresponds to the 20 you have declared. Um, if I go back to my screen, I will pick my Novak Racket again. And here I have my 20, which has been uh, propagated to the pane. So now it was 14 and 9, it became 20 and 9, and the all location is now 29. It's no more, um, it's no more uh, 23. Same here, it became 29, and the 70 that was here became 76. So whenever you do an overwrite at any, uh, at any level, the data is propagated uh, to the parent, and it can also be propagated down um, down in the hierarchy. So in other words, I mean, I can change uh, if I take again my Nova Cracket. I see here that I have an override uh, at Brussels. So this is what I have just done. But I can also do an override uh, at all location level. So I can come here 
and say, um, okay, I want to change the value here of 23 to, uh, let's say I will double it, 46. So this is at all location. I'm not saying whether it's Paris or Brussels. I'm saving. I need to refresh my screen here. And if I refresh my screen, I'll see that for my Novak racket. So now I have 46. And uh, actually, Frepol is going to uh, break down this 46 proportionally to the existing forecast, what was there before. So uh, it became 30 and 16 to give uh, 46. So it was 15 and 8 uh, that became 30 and 16. So it's proportional to what was already there, uh, the way Frepol is going to uh, propagate the forecast down there. So that's the interesting feature of Ripple is that you can um, put an override at any level. It could be at all location level, it could be at all material level, and Ripple is going to propagate this forecast uh, at children and also at parents. So here, um, as I was saying, the children have been um, automatically, um, the, the, the breakdown has been done at, at children level. Then, I can pick also any location. If I want to have a bit of more information, I can, for instance, for instance take this Novak racket at Brussels and see what, uh, what is the forecast method that has been picked. So by default, this is the one that has been um, asked to Frepol. It's the automatic. And Frepol has found some seasonality in this one and has applied the seasonality um, method. Then we also provide the forecast error that we found. So based on the demand history and based on the forecast method that has been picked, what is uh, the forecast error? And uh, we're using the, the map, um, the map uh, method, the map uh, algorithm to compute the, the, the error. So the next thing I want to show now uh, is the forecast report. So forecast report is under the sales menu. You're going to find the same information as uh, what can be found in Forecast Editor, but with uh, more information actually. So for every combination, uh, you have uh, different uh, row dimensions here. Then uh, this data is actually visible for every time bucket. So the time bucket here is weekly, but you can change that. If you want to see the data monthly, you can just click on the monthly uh, time bucket and you're going to have the data now monthly. You can also change the start and end date of the reports. If I want to start in 2018 July and fin finish in 2019 July, I can do that. Let's stick to what we had before. So I had a week and six months. So in this report, um, you can see uh, interesting value is the forecast, uh, the net forecast here. So the net forecast is going to show you uh, the difference between the total forecast and uh, the sales order for that, that time bucket. So here I have uh, a total forecast of five, but uh, I already have a quantity of three uh, as sales order. So the net forecast is the, the subtraction. So it's five minus three, it's two. And uh, this is interesting in case you're planning your forecast because this is the value that is going to be planned by the supply planning. It's the net forecast. Um, interesting feature with this report and that you cannot do with forecast editor is that you can extract this in Excel. So I need to click uh, on this uh, icon here and I can export in Excel my report. So I'm going to save my file. I'm going to pick my file in my download folder and I can open this file here. So this file can actually uh, be edited. Let's suppose I want to change um, the uh, forecast override for um, my all surface tennis ball pack in uh, Brussels. So I need to come here, all surface tennis ball pack in Brussels. So the forecast baseline is five. Let's make it uh, 14 in this case for this week and 15 the week after, then 16 and 17 for the next uh, four buckets. I can save my file, then I can re-import my file. So I can just click here, select my file, and import. So you can see here that the override has been uh, read in Excel. It's 14, 15, 16, 17. So that's very convenient if you have plenty of overrides to do to use an Excel file and, um, and make the override in Excel. 
Uh, note that um, actually the all location combination is not updated. Uh, I still have the old values. I need to have a forecast run to have the um, these 14, 15, 16, and 17 uh, updated. We can now go to the problem report and discuss the outliers. Uh, under the sales menu, I have a problem report here. So I can see different types of uh, problem. One of them is outlier. So I'm going to filter for this one. Name contains outlier. Uh, I have 19 records uh, of uh, outliers and uh, most of them are for uh, Novak Racket. So the outliers are actually um, driven by a parameter in the parameter table, which is uh, forecast.outlier max deviation. Here the value is 2. So uh, multiple of the standard deviation used to detect outliers, meaning that we compute the average and any uh, sales order value in a time bucket, which will be greater than uh, the average plus uh, two standard deviation or lower than uh, average minus two standard deviation will be reported as an outlier. So it could be, for instance, for instance, exceptional sales. Um, the question is, do you want to take into consideration this thing uh, to compute your forecast. By default, Frepol is going to trim to uh, two standard deviation the value. So we're going to consider a bit of the value, uh, but not the full value. We're just going to trim it uh, up to two standard deviation, um, whether it's uh, above two standard deviation or lower than two standard deviation, we trim it at two standard deviations. Um, then you can see them easily uh, either in forecast editor or in forecast report. If I go to uh, Novak Racket, I think it was Paris, um, you can just simply uh, scroll here on the right and each time you're going to see uh, this sign here, this exclamation mark, it means that it's an outlier that has been detected. So uh, we have quite a lot of them here for uh, Novak Racket and you can decide whether the value is correct and just don't do anything. Or uh, if something, uh, if you think it's ex exceptional sales and you don't want to consider this, uh, you don't want to consider the full value, you can uh, make an order adjustment. So uh, here, for instance, I have a nine for one year ago, uh, week of uh, uh, April 20, 2020. So it means that we're talking about one year ago, it's 2019, April, uh, week of the 20th. Value was nine. If I Let's say I just want to consider, uh, I just want Frepple to consider six uh, for uh, this week. I need to make an order adjustment of minus three. Then I need to save. And the next time I'm going to run my uh, forecast, then only six are going to be considered by Frepple.